Hey, William Gilmore here for the ScreenwritersJourney.com, and it is day 36 of the journey. And today I had a bit of an epiphany uh, regarding one of my projects. A couple days ago I mentioned that I was adding to my month of goals the novelization of a screenplay called Night Falls. Uh, I've got about 50,000 words on that so far, and I figure if I can get an extra chapter or two a month, it's not a priority, but if I have time, if I've made all my other goals and I have time to work on that, I'd like to try and get that extra chapter, maybe two a month, uh, over the course of the journey. So by the end of the year, I will have a finished novel, or relatively close to being finished. Uh, there'll be plenty of rewrites, I'm sure, and lots of editing. It's a lot of words. Uh, but the reason that I chose to uh, do a novelization of this particular screenplay was, well, there's actually two reasons. Uh, a couple of years ago at a screenwriters conference, I heard an entertainment lawyer speaking, and the clients that he represents, uh, he really likes his writers uh, to have a novel version of their screenplay, or if they have a novel, it's something that can be turned into a screenplay. Uh, he likes having those two different aspects of the same story because it makes it easier to market. If a story exists as a novel or in book form, uh, that's something that uh, he can sell to the studios. Uh, and vice versa, if you've got the screenplay, you can make it into a novel. That's uh, another marketing ploy that, that they can use. So he really likes to have that. And so I thought, oh, shoot, I can do that. So I looked at uh, a couple of my different scripts, and uh, Nightfall seemed ripe for that. And this is my other reason why I chose to do it. I've been having some issues with that particular screenplay. Uh, it was one of my early screenplays, one of my very first. And... It didn't turn out too bad, although the first draft was not good. It was really pretty, pretty bad. Uh, but I went through a number of iterations on it and rewrites, and it finally got it to a place that I thought it was actually doing pretty good. I, I, I felt good about what had been done with it, and uh, I think I entered it into a contest. I did a couple contests. It was a, uh, it got uh, like a semifinalist and a couple things in screenplay competitions, uh, but. One of them offered coverage on the screenplay. So I said, oh, sure, I'll take the coverage, see what, what people are actually thinking about it. And the coverage was actually pretty good on that particular screenplay. Uh, good dialogue, great characters, uh, interesting story. However, and this was a big however, the main character, Michael, uh, was kind of flat. He didn't have a real clear objective so all this good stuff going on around him was really cool and great, but you didn't care a whole lot because you didn't care about Michael. That's Peanut you see walking around in the background there. Uh, Michael was just kind of, uh, he was not a very active protagonist. Uh, he's uh, a character that just kind of, he wants things to maintain the way they are, and he would prefer just to slink back in the shadows and disappear, uh, which is actually very apropos to his character but it doesn't make a, a real strong storyline. Uh, his antagonist was Damon. It's an unsavory character from his past. And uh, there's a, a B story going on. Uh, basically, and, and this is where we start getting into problems, I was trying to create the logline and describe what the piece was about. I was like, well, it's this bartender. There's a series of murders going on. The police are investigating. They're closing in on the bar where he works at because things keep leading them back there. And all of a sudden, he becomes a suspect. Um, and he's got to do something to either throw the cops off his scent or save the girl he loves, or and it just kind of went, yeah. And so I, I, I noticed a couple of my query letters went back and looked at him. I kept describing it as an ensemble drama, which is deaf uh, to tell a producer or, or a studio uh, because they, they're like, we want that high concept uh, screenplay. And it seemed like this was a high-concept screenplay, but I couldn't describe it that way. I couldn't come up with that, that one-line premise of what it was about. So I thought if I did the novelization, because I had created so much in this world, and there were so many things that I had envisioned that just couldn't go into the screenplay because there's not enough time, I thought, well, if I do the novelization, I can explore all those other areas, and maybe I will find what that, that drive is for Michael and, and really beat the screenplay up. And I started thinking about all this because... Uh, the screenplay I have been working on that we've been talking about here on the blog, Come Ups, has a similar problem in that my lead character, Shep, is kind of weak. Um, it's not as bad as Michael, 
I mean, he has a goal, and I can certainly beef him up. But I was like, hmm, do I have a problem with my my leading characters? Or is my hero always this kind of? Yeah, I do all this great stuff around them, but is the hero weak? Is that a persistent problem that I have? And I'm glad to say it's not, because Epiphany. Uh, as I was thinking about this and, and comparing the two uh, heroes in these two different screenplays, and you know, why do I have, seem to have this problem? My B story in Night Falls is about a retired police detective in New York who investigated a series of serial killings about 10 years before. And with the killings that are going on presently that Michael's getting involved in, um, there's a striking similarity. And so this cop thinks that maybe the serial killer has resurfaced, but that's kind of hard for the serial killer to do because he's in jail, unless the police officer got the wrong killer. So as I was thinking about that, it just all of a sudden it hit me. My police detective, Anthony Vaselli, is actually the protagonist. The story is really about him, and looking at the novel helped me figure that out, because as I was introducing characters and, and developing the storyline in the novel, Vaselli gets introduced first, not Michael. Michael doesn't show up actually until about chapter five, which is really late for the hero of your story to show up and start participating in it. And everything just sort of fell into place at that point. Um, I even wrote a scene in the novel and, and didn't realize it. It was inadvertent, subconscious, unconscious, whatever it was. I wrote this whole scene where 10 years earlier, the killer shows up to uh, the detective's house, and it's kind of—it's sort of a supernatural thriller. So uh, weird things happen. So somehow this uh, killer shows up and basically tells the detective, "Come find me." Uh, and so it's been a ten-year odyssey for this detective, looking for this killer that he thought he put away. Uh, he's forced out of the department because he's claiming that. The guy that was arrested and convicted and sent off to prison is not the guy. Yeah, and this was the hero cop who saved the city, and now he's going bonkers, apparently, and claiming that the real killer's still out there. Uh, so now here it is ten years later, and these killings are happening again. And it just everything just sort of clicked in, into uh, perspective for me. Um, and I actually thought of it, a quick log line. Now this needs work, obviously. This is just a quick off the top of my head. But the log line went from... You know, a bartender who suddenly gets caught up in these killings and na na na, and he's got to decide, you know, is he going to save himself or save the girl? And it just, it was very confusing and all over the place and just didn't sound very strong. The new one is a former police, oh, someone said this, um, a former police officer is forced out of retirement when. A serial killer he thought he had put away resurfaces and begins preying on New Yorkers once again. So we, you know, we have our villain in that log line, we've got our hero, we've got the goal, I've got to find this serial killer before he kills somebody else. It's very simple, it's high concept. Um, one of the reasons uh, that I was thinking that Michael was the lead or the hero, the protagonist, uh, is because of this unsavory character from his past, who may or may not be the killer. Michael may be the killer. So there's this whole conflict going on between the two of them. And there's this twist at the end. That's where my supernatural part comes in. And that twist kind of reveals what their true nature is, what, what they're really all about. <clears throat> and it's something that was revealed to the audience between the two of them. Uh, and yeah, it's a twist, because... The audience hopefully hasn't figured it out at that point, although there's plenty of clues along the way. Uh, but these two guys already know what their true nature is. So revealing it to themselves is really not that big of a shock. Um, and what it should be is somebody in the movie, in the film, should have that shock, that realization that things aren't what they seem to be. And that's obviously Vaselli, the detective. And there's a scene where he comes in at the end and they're all there together. It just, it all makes sense. It all came, it just clicked. And I'm like, wow, how did I miss that all this time? And the funny thing is when I got that coverage several years back, the person who was reading, who really liked everything, pointed out the fact that, wow, you really played up Vaselli. He's obviously an important character to you, but he's kind of taking away 
from the story of our two guys who are in conflict, uh, Damon and Michael. So you need to play him down and try and beef them up. Um, and so I, I did that, and in subsequent submissions and, and coverage that I got on that, the screenplay did not perform as well, and I couldn't quite figure out why. And I was like, what, what's going on? You know, It's a stronger, better script. I've got more interesting things happening. Why is, why is it not responding? Or why is the response not as good as it was? And it's because I downplayed the focus on the Sally and tried to put all the focus on what technically is the B story, and the B story is just not enough to hold the movie together. Um, she had the right idea. She had her finger on it, on the problem. Just gave the wrong direction on what to do with it. Uh, but that's because I was putting all the focus, or, or trying to put the focus on Michael and Damon. And so she, that's what I wanted to do. That's what she, the advice she gave me. And actually what it should have been was put them in the B story, make Vizelli the A story. Um, so I'm really excited about this. Uh, I really want to jump into it and start working. All my elements are there. I don't think it's going to take a lot of rewriting uh, to make this work. Uh, it's just changing the focus. Um, it's going to re require some rewriting and probably more than I'm anticipating. But I think it's completely doable. And I really want to jump back on that project. But i got to finish come ups. If I start bouncing around from project to project, I'm never going to get anything done, so I need to stay focused on the one I need to finish up. Uh, come ups this month, and I think Nightfalls may be the next project that I tackle and see how that comes along. So anyway, that was my big day. I was very excited about the whole thing, if you can't tell. Um, and it was such an obvious thing. I just, but I, You get so caught up in your story sometimes, and you're so focused on it, and you, know, you can only see it this way. And sometimes you really have to do step outside the box and look at it from, from another perspective. It's why it's always good to take some time off from your writing. After you finish something, set it aside for a couple days, and then come back and look at it with fresh eyes. Um, so if you're having problems with one of your own scripts, things aren't working out for you the way you, the way you think they should, you know, set it aside for a day or two, and then come back and look at it in a completely different light. Y even if it's arbitrary, what happens if you know, I make this person you know, the main story? Or what if... Throw a bunch of what-ifs at it and see if that doesn't spark something that can really alter the story for you and make it come alive. So that's my challenge to you. I will see you back here on the blog tomorrow. Until then, keep up that writing!